Yeah. Nice. We mic'd the Omnidirectionals. <laughs> <laughs> we got the mics. Don't worry, we have the mics and we are live. Hello. Speaking to the <laughs> <laughs> Speaking to the bush. Uh, Scott Boyer is here. Uh, it, so Scott, you know, uh, you and I talk about the market all the time. I think one of the things that's really interesting right now is that we're, it seems like the markets, the stock market is trying to make, the Dow is trying to make another all-time higher. It's trying to get back up to that all-time high that we hit just yeah. a few months back. Um, and I know there are a lot of people who've been asking me, who've been talking about, you know, in, in coffee shops, I hear it. What's next? Where do you go now? Because essentially, if you like the way your stock portfolio looks right now, you have to evaluate your risk versus your reward. Like what is the, the risk for staying in the stock market when you're at all time highs versus the reward? And, and what about diversifying? A lot of people are talking about diversifying into real estate. So rental properties especially, um, but real estate in general. So what I wanted to kind of discuss today was different ways that you could do that, pros and cons to them. Maybe you could tell us a story or two or you know, just give us some ideas on how people could do something like that. Well, one, I would, I would first start out with the, with the caution of the investor that looks at things now and doesn't see the opportunity or the, or the need to think differently. So you can go back to Warren Buffett. He always says you know, fascinating things. Um, and he always says that when others are greedy, you'd be fearful. When others are fearful, you'd be greedy. So if you look at that of where we're at now, all, times, all, all time highs would say is that this, the complacency in the market of, it, well, it's going up, so I'm not gonna do anything. But I would caution that because human behavior is so consistent. And you can go back to 2000, you can go back to 2008, and human behavior always plays out the exact same. So that's caution number one, is that the, for the real estate investor or, or the person that wants to get in or sees an opportunity for diversification, pay attention to that fact, no, no, number one. The second thing is that I will always be a proponent of someone saying you should, be, um, you should have skills to know how to navigate in the markets. To me, if I had a wish for every even real estate investor, I would say you should stay, stay in, in the market but I will say this as the caveat, and this is where it, it falls apart in the sense that if you don't have skills to be in the market and know what to do, then that's the other reason of why you really need to diversify into something that um, is going to have a predictability that, that you need. And especially for the passive investor and the guy that's at the top and running out, out of time in the sense of that he's like, man, I'm okay, like my age, and says, hey, I'm, I'm getting where I've worked hard and I've made it, now I want to keep it. Well, it, it should be okay. And, he's, and so those are the things I want them to pay attention to. And also the one that says, yeah, I'd stay in the stock market, but I, I don't even want to mess with it. I don't have any skills. I don't know what to do when. And sometimes you look at what happened with the stockbrokers and again, good people, but their model is to keep the money in for their own purposes and their own fees. So we can get into that in a rabbit hole and I'm not going to, of just saying, you should, you should fire them, hire you because there's ways to take advantage of where we're at at the all-time highs, and so that you're set up that when the market does turn, and it will. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> Correct. And so to not get caught in that human behavior, it's almost like shaking yourself loose of saying, okay, I really have to do something. Sell and get out. We can talk about Southern California and all of those <clears throat> challenges. But for the guy that's got you know, a, uh, an IRA that's you know, you know, nice and fat, and it says, okay, now what do I do? It's time to, to, to do something. And I, I would say whether you, know, you can get in and say, Let's, well, I'm going to buy a REIT. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and that's how I'm going to get into the market. And I would say this is that when you look at the market and you look at the patterns, a lot of people don't know is that the S&P 500 drives, drives the market. I think we all kind of have heard of that and know, know about that. But when you look at any stock that is U.S. based, it literally is like railroad tracks that basically whatever it does, they all do. And you can, you can run and hide and think you're gonna, you're gonna beat, beat the market. And the problem is this, is that I, I know of investors that back in 08 when it fell and it was, it was down 40%, they got calls and the broker would say, yeah, but you're only down 25. And that was supposed to be a win. That drawdown, those drawdowns are so significant that there are ways, if you think about it, if I'm at an all-time high, get that money out, put it in something that pays cash flow, and you have a hard asset underneath it. And, and that's something to where in 10 years, 
Because if you look at what happened in 08, you had stocks that never came back. But Scott, and so I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Let's say, okay, hey, I get it. I want to get out. I recognize we're at the top. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull my money out of stocks, okay? But I got to put it somewhere. Right. Because if I just sit here, that makes no sense. I can't make hardly anything on it if I just let it sit in cash. So what, you know, what, how do I put it in real estate? I don't have 500 grand to buy an investment property in Lemon Grove. Right. You know what I mean? Well, that, that's going to make 2200 bucks right. a month on. Right. And that's the Southern California problem because the, when the market does t- tank and real estate will, will, will get hit, it'll get hurt again, how bad we can have that discussion all, all day long too. What I have seen, if you go back and look at the numbers back from 08, it's a great um, example of, of what to and where to go and where not to go. So if you look at, at areas so like where we're at in, in Indianapolis, people say, well, why Indianapolis? Well, partly because it's pretty boring in Indianapolis. Not a whole lot happens there. But that's great because when you look at how how hard most markets got hit, it's like a V. When you look at, at Indianapolis and in Indiana, it, it, it dropped but not as far. What that does, it always gives you an, an exit strategy to where the, the asset underneath. I mean, when you're talking about properties that are you know, in our spot of where we stay in that 80 to 100 grand, okay, that's, that, that's, there's not a whole lot for where it's going to go, not right. number one. But that's good for the, for, for the investor. And also in economic times that, that get, get harder, what happens to rents? Rents tend to actually go up. That's good for the investor. So it, in, a, in, a, in a market where you're very well diverse, and that's when we look at why Indianapolis, is that it's very diverse to where you're not heavy on any one industry. I mean, you can go get a couple more points in your cap rate and go to Detroit. The problem is, is that it's at a high risk to have your block plowed after the market drops and you end up, you know, it, where it's, it's another, um, you know, Detroit scorched to earth where everything is just burnt to the ground. You're going to be part of that. And long term for a passive investor, that's just not what they want. So we stay where we, where we are because it gives a guy that, that has the IRA or has the cash or wherever and says, I need to, I need to, t- it's time to redeploy. And time to redeploy is this is the best way way to do it to where I can get cash flow, I can have a hard asset, I can put the money in, and you don't need um, someone says, well, I've only got twenty grand. Well, we have you you can finance them. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get in. There's some fascinating ways you can actually. Well, what you're talking about is passive. Correct. So, so you're yeah. talking about for the person who doesn't want to have to figure out the real estate market, who doesn't want to have to figure out how to trade the stock market, who doesn't want to. Do any of that stuff. They right. want to learn a new skill. Right. They say, hey, Scott, I, I've, I've made my money. I have money here. I want to take it, and I want to put it somewhere where it's going to make me money and where I have less risk. I love that. Because I don't want <laughs> to get my head blown off right. when the stock market drops 40%. Right, because most of you're not, if you're if you're thinking passive in, investor, you, you, you're thinking longer term, but you're also thinking safety and being able to make sure that your lifestyle is, con- is consistent. There were so many people back, if you think back to 08, I mean, it, it, it seems so long ago, but of the lifestyles that got changed in an instant because they just, won, they believed their broker, didn't pay attention, and there's so much in the psychology and the human behavior of how we end up there. And it's, if I could implore you know, any investor out there of, don't waste this opportunity because the opportunity is so unique to where there is still time to make the transition. And the smart investor should always be a little early. The ones that are trying to get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit bit more are the ones that tend to stay way too long because then they get in the, it, it drops and they're like, so go back to what happened la- late last year. And that's where everyone was like, ooh, that, was an, oh, that, that, that dropped. Mm, well, it'll probably come back. And here's the worst thing of what it did. Came it came back. back. I know. And so, ev- confirmation. so everybody was like, well, see, this is just going to go up forever. It's the same thing back in, back in 08. Things, it's unsustainable. Now, I can, I can get into looking at Japan. I can look at, at the, uh, what happened with them from a historical standpoint. I can look at the, the uh, bond market and where I believe that, that the next uh, bubble is, um, that there's just a lot of risk out there. But owning a hard asset, people are going to have to live somewhere and not being in some things, the stock market is, is going to get absolutely hammered. If you look at 2000, it was, I think, about a, what, a 36 month that it took it to, um, for, for it, 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 it to fall, and then how long for it to come back, and then what happened in 08, I think it was, a, it was, a, it was 18 months. So you, you find that, that, that the drops happen faster. 
because you you climb up but you fall down that's the problem so it's like you watch it climb up oh we're up we're up another 100 150 120 80 points you know but then we're down 900 we're down 1200 like the the drawdowns were so big and but so i'm talking violent. about a drawdown that is going to make a drawdown be it like the christmas wish that we'd like just to have a drawdown because when this thing breaks and it and it begins and who knows what the it, do, it doesn't matter that that's that, there's no crystal ball of what it's going to be but when it breaks because of where, where we're at for it to go back and, and, and find its support or, or where it's going to find its where there's real it's balance yep it's for it to find that it, it, there's there's only so many places and, and it's and they're pretty far apart from, from each other yeah so that thing is has got a long way to come yep. down and for the real estate investor it just they don't have to be a part of that and, and to cross their fingers and take the risk because without skills on when to do what you're in for a really it's just going to be a really and, and it's again i'm not i'm not like a, a henny penny the sky is falling but but just the reality we know what happened in 2000 we know what happened in 2008 we know where, where we're at now and it it has to breathe so it was like 92 right 91 92 2001 or 99 we had the technical within yeah. 2001 we had that yeah. and then 2008 we hit the bottom in the beginning of 2009. We're way overextended for... For 10 years. Right. So if you look at the, at the timing of when most recessions and most... Because it's healthy. For an economy to really grow, you always have to shake kind of the... Um, the you know, it's like the wheat and the chaff. you got to kind of shake the chaff out every once in a while. That's what makes a, a good, healthy economy. So it needs to happen eventually. And, 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 well, the and, forest fires. It's got to happen. Yeah. And so it's... But it's it's what do I do while well, it's all great? Do I have the vision to, to look a little bit um, a little bit deeper and, and longer? And there's so many there's so many great things to uh, when when it, when you look at it. And again, I just look at the two. Is it like I said? If you're gonna if you're gonna be, be in the market, have skills flat out. Don't don't play in in that space without knowing when to do what. And and I just and I and I know that the financial planners and, and they're they're good people. But it's also about that money's got to stay in for them to make their their fees. Right. So I. Where's the conflict? Right. Yeah, and I think with uh, with what you're talking about, so passively, you know, fully managed rental real estate that you can get, you know, a house. Which is why we do a turnkey. Eighty to a hundred grand. Right. You know, it's just sort of off the radar of most people who are in the California mindset. Right. I need to bring you on the radio show too. I had Barry Habib on a couple of weeks ago, who was talking about his prediction for the stock market. And this guy's been spot on for the last couple of recessions. And he looks at, you know, he, he's really a master of the bond market. He looks at, you know, different crossovers and stuff and these recession signals as they come up. What's really weird right now, though, is you're seeing, you know, rates go lower, money mm -hmm. flowing into bonds, and you're also seeing the stock market go higher. So that correlation's gone. Somebody's wrong. That's correct. Somebody is wrong. <laughs> and we'll and as those, we call, them, we call those a, a, a divergence. Right. Where, where something is, is, is off. It has, to, it has to come back to its mean. Something's got to come back. Correct. And um, so, again, and, and there's things that you can look at with Japan of what happened with, with them. But here's a little unknown fact is, do you know who is the biggest holder of bonds? Chinese. No. It's Social Security. Our own government is the biggest holder of our own government bonds. So when the bond market, the Social Security Administration correct. buys bonds, yeah, from the government, yeah, what? Isn't that crazy? So they are, they are, they are the biggest holder. And so when when it when it when it breaks apart, it's not it's not that that the the Chinese are going to get hurt the worst. We're going to get hurt the worst our, our, ourselves because we are the biggest holder of them, which is why the Ponzi scheme builds and builds and builds, which means when it breaks, it'll break hard. And hard. So you obviously believe, and I tend to agree, that the safest thing to be in is real estate. A hard, a hard asset. Well, again, I'll, again, I'll always say, say the two. Have skills in the market. That's fine. But if I don't know how to fly the plane, I'm happy to be the passenger. Or maybe just to get off the plane completely and, 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 and go to something that's... A lot, a lot safer that you actually know, but in, but in real estate, it's not just having to do it in your backyard, and that's the other part. Because most will say, oh, "I'd love to get into real estate." So what do I do? Well, I'll, I'll go buy some real estate companies, or I'll go, you know, buy in banking, or I'll go buy a REIT, and they and they look at all these things that are are going to, uh, you're you're in with the group. It's it, it's it's got its own risk all by itself, and it's so it's not as hard to get into real estate, and do it right, and get out of having the barriers so high in California where that's what say probably about 70% of our 
of our current clients come out of California. So there's a lot of smart investors that are like, you know what, I, it, it something doesn't smell right. And, and they've been moving out for, for quite a while. Well, we've seen a pretty big exodus in California, just in general, population-wise, a lot of people leaving. Right. If you talk to realtors, and I do on a regular basis, and ask them, you know, where, what are your sellers doing? Are they buying up? Are they buying down? They're leaving. Right. That's what's <laughs> yeah. happening. Right. Uh, <laughs> They're leaving right. the state. They're yeah. going to Arizona, Texas, mm -hmm. Utah, Idaho. That's right. where they're going. Right. Um, so it's very, very interesting. Now, the other thing, too, with, with the real estate, and this is where I think people could get caught up, is, <clears throat> well, okay, Scott, I get it. I'm getting my money out of stocks. I'm going to buy some, you know, passively, you know, managed real estate through you know, homes done for you, and or done for you homes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically say, all right, here, here's my money. But here's my concern: if you're right, the stock market gets gets killed. Real estate itself will also get hurt badly, and I don't want to own real estate and get hit by that. So, well, the passive how do you address that because the passive investor is in it for the cash flow. Number one. Okay, so while the market's doing what it's going to do, you're still you're still making cash flow, which is the purpose of what an investor wants. Because if your money's in the stock market and you need cash flow, you've got to keep robbing the golden goose. And if you've already taken a forty percent hit, you're just digging your hole deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And at least having the asset underneath where I I know I can get my my cash flow out, so my lifestyle does not change, and knowing that when you look at the history of it, is that it, it's going to take a dip, but it, it doesn't take in certain markets like we, like we talked about earlier. Some markets just, it, it, it bottoms out terribly. It did in California. You saw it in Florida. You saw it in, uh, in, in Vegas where these markets just got absolutely hit of those that were thinking that they were going to be passively investing in those places. So why Indianapolis? It's because it will hold long term and it's already proven that in, in a downturn. So that's why we go there because it'll always give the investor the opportunity that says, I need to get out and he can get out without losing his shirt. Even if the market is, is in a place where we're in, a, in, in the middle of, of a downturn. And I mean, I, the one thing I would also add to that is that one thing to keep in mind if you're an investor who is looking at this and you want the passive income, once you determine your cap rate, your cap rate's cap rate. It doesn't matter what the market does. Correct. So like, hey, if you're happy with, uh, a nine cap or a 12 cap or whatever it is, you, see, you know, it varies between like what, eight and 13 or something. Yeah. I've, I've looked at your inventory and if you want to see the inventory, just follow the link below and you can check out the inventory. Yeah, so it makes, can, I, can I do that? Can I say, click the link, be, does that make sense? <laughs> click the link below. You can't I've click never, the link I've, below. I've never, I've never done that before. Click you the can, link below here. It's down there somewhere. Click the link below. Yeah, if you want to look at the inventory, you can look at it. I've looked at it. Uh, it's very, very interesting to look at this inventory and see, okay, here's here's what you can get. Those cap rates are the same. So even if you buy a place for 82000 yeah, in a year from now it's worth 75000 or something like that. It doesn't matter unless you want to sell it. Correct. Because so you're right. You're still making your 10% you know, on your investment every year, which is what you're really looking for. And if right. you do that, if you can make a 10 cap, keep in mind, you make a 10 cap, you need 10 years and you're completely paid back. It doesn't even matter. Right. And, when, and people will always, I've heard this, will say, but it's not a loss in the market until I sell. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, I, would say, I would say this, is that remember back in 08 that there are stocks that never came back. Yeah. Never Broadcom. came back. Right. And so you talk about, you know, and then you saw a lot of games going on that you had certain stocks where they did a reverse split. And all that means is this, is that, so if you had 100 shares that were uh, worth a dollar, Okay, so what they did is they did a reverse and they said, you now have one share it's worth 100. So it's still the same value to you, but they played the game to make the value of the stock look different. They do this all the time. It's called a reverse split. Most people think about the split that where they get more shares and the price drops. But a reverse split is just the same. We take shares, we up the price, and it's a way to mentally play a game of the value of a stock. But when you look at those that actually did that, there are stocks that really just have gone nowhere since that, that drop in, in 08. So the value never never changed. And so pe people that were waiting for it to come back, sometimes you can wait a long time. Real estate has a, a cycle that, yes, it will drop, but we all know that it does come back. But if I can cash flow through it, that means I'm not taking the risk of if I want out in the middle of a, a, a downturn, and I can keep my cash flow because if something does extend longer or 
or you have a drop of, I mean, look, I mean, look what the market did in 08. I mean, it, it took a, I think at the, at the low, it was, what was it, down? I know it was 666, oh, ironically. The, the, but, but the percentage the of it, yeah, yeah it was the, down 60%. Yeah, the S&P got to, uh, below that, actually. And then the, the Dow was at like 6,500. Yeah, so I mean, you're talking, so if, if I'm drawing money. We've quadrupled since then. Yes, but if I'm drawing money off of that, at the time where it's, it's, that, it's that low, there's a mental part of that that gets really tough because, it, again, it's like digging a hole deeper and deeper. And, and I just, I, I think for a lot of investors of where they're at that have IRA money to, to roll over, uh, there are great opportunities of how you can ha you can have the IRA own the real estate and have the the rent come into the IRA. We do that all the time. So I would probably say, can you still ten thirty one if you're in the IRA? Well, it, it's yeah. You, you you can still you can still sell your 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 stocks and have it go into where you you're you're, you're going to purchase a, a property and it's still in the tax deferred. You're not going to have a taxable event. Whoa, whoa, whoa. so. Um because you're rolling it over on that because it's rolling it over that's one of the big i think holdbacks for a lot of people who are heavy in stocks is that well i don't want to sell them because i'm going to have to pay a bunch of taxes i'm way up you know so what you're saying is you it's can like sell over. it's like a rollover and you can essentially 1031 the money and buy the real estate inside the right IRA. so i'm not saying that that's not going to be from from your from your gains necessarily that that that's a question for your, your tax advisor but from the standpoint of you're not going to have a taxable event because you're you're now going to have real estate that is holding is inside of your IRA, so it's still in that tax deferred state. You're just changing what the asset is. Gotcha. So versus stocks, it's now going to be real estate. Okay. So yeah. So you. So but a taxable event. If I if I choose to go ahead and and sell, but but normally you know in the sense of that if when when you change over even inside of of your I your IRA, and you, and you're making a gain, that gain is tax deferred. So in the sense you can I'm again ask your tax advisor, but I'm. I'm fairly certain that if I sell my if I sell out of my portfolio back into cash, it's still in my IRA. So for me to then just take that and put it into real estate, I'm still in an IRA. So there's no tax. Mm. Very interesting. Because I, I haven't I haven't taken a distribution. I haven't. It's still tax in a tax deferred status. So even if I sell true, if I sell something, I have a profit. That profit is tax deferred. So I bet. So I'm. It's fine to have it in inside of um, an, IRA, an IRA. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, I just f kind of forgot about how the IRA works. Like, yeah, because it's you don't pay tax until you pull it out. Right. That's the whole point. You can right. grow it without paying tax. Correct. So e even if I, I make a profit, that's fine. You do it all the time, um, but I can just change it over, and it's it's like you're rolling it over, and I'm gonna take my proceeds, and I'm now gonna buy four or five five houses. Now I still have an asset, but now the cash flow, the rents, then are paid into the IRA. And then you can just basically and it's, and that, so all that rent money snowball that but all that rent money is now tax deferred. If you really want to get crazy, you could actually or ways to do it. I'll, so the short version is go from get get it self directed, which is that's what in, in rolling it over you're going to get it self directed. You could actually do a solo four hundred one k, or you could just go ahead and take the one time hit or over a period of years and convert it to a Roth. Now we have a scenario to where you can snowball that to where it's now that money coming out at some point is tax-free. That'd be pretty sick. But inside the IRA, mm -hmm. what I like about that is, so let's say I have 500 grand. Mm -hmm. So I have 500,000, stocks were way up. I, I, I got in you know, at the bottom 10 years ago. I right. quadrupled, so now I have 500,000. <clears> I have 500,000 bucks here. I'm gonna buy, let's say five properties yep. for easy math. Um, yeah, home time for right. you. So uh, turnkey, right? And so I'm going to get those those five properties, and then I'm going to get cash coming in every single month from each one of those properties. Let's call it a thousand bucks. Okay, so I get five grand a month coming in. Right. Then you could snowball that into you know, as soon as you get enough for down payment, buy another one. True, but what, here's here's what you can also do that most people don't don't know about. You can have private lenders loan money into your IRA for you to buy property. You pay them a percentage for their money, their first lien holder on the property for their safety, and you can rinse and repeat that all day long. And I will tell you, um, uh, Gary is a gentleman out of, um, out of Akron, Ohio. And uh, he, 15 years ago, 
literally in 15 years was staring at retirement, had zero, had no money. <laughs> it was like, what do I do? And so he did this strategy, got the IRA all set up, made the first contribution, and basically had money loaned into. So he had a little bit in, but he had money coming in to put the down payment. It was had fu uh, the uh, financing on it. Some were just bought outright. But the point was that in 15 years, he's now cash flowing over 40000 a month. 40000 a month? 40000 so, so there's so the lender, I, so the, hold on. So I want to try to understand yeah. this. So I have my IRA. Let's go. Let's back up. I didn't buy the five properties. I got my five hundred thousand. So I've got my five hundred thousand in the IRA, and you're, what you're telling me is that there's a lender who will loan me money into the IRA so that I can have more than five hundred thousand. Yeah. So there, it, it, it's private money. It okay. could be. It could be your. It could be your cousin. It could be your uncle. It could be your neighbor. Whatever the case might be. Someone that says, "I want to get into real estate, but I don't want to be a landlord," and they just want to get paid on their money, which is another thing is that what, what a great thing for somebody that, you know, has money to deploy like that to where they're, they want to do that to say, you know what? Yeah, someone else can take the risk, but I want to be secure. Great. We'll put you as, as the first lean, lean horror on the property. Um, so you're in kind of in a joint deal, but they're getting paid, paid out on their percentage of the money loan. They get paid, paid off. The point is, is that that can be rinsed and repeated as much as you actually want to. And then eventually the loan is paid off and that cash flow is now free because the property is now completely uh, paid. And that's wow. how you go from zero to 40 grand in, in 15 years. Documented case, seen it, my jaw dropped. Because again, I, again, I've, look, in the time that I, as a real estate investor myself, I like, I didn't know you could do that. So there's all kinds of ways. So even for someone like that of saying, you know what, just always be thinking kind of outside the box or, or be willing to learn, but also be willing to act and do something different. Don't be in the place where so many were in 08, where they look back and they're like, yeah, I lost X amount of my account, but I didn't achieve. How did I miss that? And oh yeah, I, I remember in 2019, you know, I, I, I could have X, Y, and Z, but oh, you know, now I'm, I'm still working at Walmart or I don't know, whatever. It's, there are so many things that can be done. So for the one that has the cash, it doesn't matter if it's in an if it's in, if it's in an, uh, an IRA. Those that have properties that you know is your first house here in San Diego, and you know you're you're living somewhere else, and you rented that one out, and you're starting to get to that place. You're like, man, we need to do something. Ten thirty one it out, and 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 put it someplace to where it's you're you're gonna have a longer term story of of the smart move you made, not just that first one, but be smart and go outside the box versus trying to make it always in your backyard because that doesn't always work. And the market is just one of those things is that have skills or get out because you're going to get run over the next time when it happens. And everyone, some people still are licking their wounds from 2008. Yeah. And, and people from there were licking their wounds from, from 2000. And so it's just one of these, these cycles to where, where, where we ended in 2008 is where we actually peaked out in 2000. So when you think about really where people are from 2000, 2019, it's not as high as they think. When you average that out year over year of what they think that they've made, and even most financial products, don't cannot meet even what the market does all by itself. So if I literally just bought the S&P, I could be up so much further. So when people think of what the market's been up since 09, when, when it bottomed, and when they look at what they're, they're up, there's gonna be a differential that might shock you. And that's why I say is that, that's why I say always fire them and hire you is always just a, a mantra that I, I believe in. And, and again, either go get skills and, or put it in real estate and from a passive side, I would say that's, that usually is where it's much more easier to be, to be passive in real estate than it is in the market because it'll always require skills. So don't want to do that. So many ways to actually do it with, with real estate. So yeah. many ways. So many people who also need this information and people who, um, who are nearing retirement, who would like to take some risk off the table, who would like to know what they've got, like to know what's coming, what to expect in retirement. Um, this is a great, way to do that. Check it out, doneforyouhomes.com. Uh, the link will be uh, below in the post. And uh, if you'd like to see the inventory, uh, you can check it out right there. We have a link there as well. Scott Boyer, thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Great to, great to see you. Really appreciate Always. your time. Hey, guys, share this video with your friends. Make them smarter than everyone else. We'll see you soon.